Jannah, paradise, according to Islam. The term Jannah is derived from an Arabic word meaning hidden, cover, or concealed, as Jannah is a place which is hidden from sight and covered by trees and plants. Jannah is often translated to mean green garden. Jannah, or paradise, is understood to be located in the region of the seventh heaven. The English word heaven refers to the realm of seven heavens, skies that hover above the earth. As with other aspects of Islam, Muslims must believe in the concept of Jannah, paradise, to complete their faith. Jannah is the eternal abode of radiant joy, peace, and bliss in the afterlife, reserved only for faithful and righteous individuals who, during their lifetimes, believed in the one and only God, the ultimate creator, his message, and his prophets and messengers, and lived righteous lives, following the commandments of God and guarding them against evil. It will be the final destination for those entering paradise who will dwell there forever and never taste evil or death. And paradise will be brought near that day to the righteous, God-conscious individuals who guard themselves against evil. Quran 2690 Paradise is exalted, a place of absolute peace and contentment. A person will attain his or her complete fulfillment in this paradise, where their wishes will be granted with no restrictions. Inhabitants will see only what they desire and listen to sounds that give them pleasure. Unlike the joys of the world we inhabit, the joys and pleasures of paradise will never fade away and are pure and everlasting. A person in paradise will find their company in the righteous, with many families reuniting. Paradise will be free of emptiness, sorrow, hate, boredom, jealousy, handicap, illness, uneasiness, fatigue, disease, hurt, distress, and anxiety. The shade of Jana will be a shelter of protection and security, and no fear or sadness will affect its residents. And whoever does righteous deeds, whether male or female, while being a believer, those will enter paradise and will not be wronged, even as much as the speck on a date seed. Quran 4, 124 The bounties, the beauties, and the pleasures of paradise are so great, so vast, so pure, so astonishing, that it is beyond the abilities of a person's mind to understand. Thus, no heart or mind can ever comprehend them, much like a blind person cannot possibly see or describe colors accurately in this world, a person cannot possibly imagine the delights of paradise, delights so immense that they have no basis of comparison in the earthly realm. No one will ever be able to fully understand or grasp the true realm of paradise until they enter its bounds. God's messenger stated, Allah the Exalted has said, I have prepared for my righteous slaves what no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and the mind of no man has conceived. God the Almighty in His mercy has given humanity only glimpses of the descriptions of paradise in the Holy Quran and narrations of our Prophet Muhammad, Hadith, thus providing an idea of what one can look forward to in paradise as encouragement and inspiration for one to strive to please their Lord and enter paradise. Paradise was created before the creation of mankind by the Almighty, and this ethereal place will never end or cease to exist. The mansions, food, clothing, and jewelry found in paradise will be far superior to and greater than their counterparts of this world. Unlike the joys and pleasures of this world, the pleasures of paradise are everlasting. One will never grow tired in paradise, where delights and pleasures will only increase each time as they indulge in them. And no soul knows what has been hidden for them of comfort for eyes as a reward for what they used to do. Quran 32.17 The first of mankind to enter paradise will be the last and final prophet of God, Muhammad, peace be upon him. And the first nation to enter paradise will be his nation, the final nation. Generally, the poor will enter paradise before the rich. Amongst the first to enter paradise are all Shahuda, the martyrs, the ones who are chaste and proud, and the slaves who worship Allah with devotion, sincerity, 
and faithfulness towards their master. Amongst the ones that will enter paradise first are the 70,000 individuals who will be allowed entrance with no questioning or punishment, and according to the narration of our prophet, arriving with each thousand will be another 70,000, plus three handfuls of the handfuls of our Lord. May he be glorified. Paradise consists of seven levels, with each level divided into many stages, levels, and categories. Each level up in paradise comprises greater joys and pleasures and is more amazing than the level beneath it. The lowest level of paradise is ten times the size of this whole universe. The highest level of paradise is called Janat ul Firdos. Our prophet stated, paradise has one hundred grades, each of which is as big as the distance between heaven and earth. The highest of them is Firdos, and the best of them is Firdos. The throne is above Firdos, and from it spring forth the rivers of paradise. If you ask of Allah glorified and exalted be he, ask him for Firdaus. Inhabitants of paradise from all levels will communicate with one another, whereas one could visit levels beneath them, one cannot live or enjoy the pleasures of levels higher than he or she inhabits. Paradise comprise eight gates. Each gate is named and reserved only for individuals who perform specific good deeds. One gate is reserved exclusively for those who fast. Another one is meant for those who struggle in the way of God. One gate is for those who pray, and another is for those who give charity. Some will be called to enter from all eight gates. The gate at the far right will be for those who will not be held to any accountability. Everyone else will enter paradise with the rest of their nations through the other seven gates. The gates are so vast that the distance between two panels within just one gate of paradise is that of a distance of 40 years walking. Still, there will come a time when the ethereal realm gets very crowded. Before entering paradise from its gates, one would feel its breeze and inhale its fragrance, both so strong that they can be experienced 40 years away. When the doors open upon entering, angels will greet and congratulate its inhabitants with the greatest of kindness and peace. But those who feared their Lord will be driven to paradise in groups until, when they reach it while its gates have been opened, and its keepers say, Peace be upon you. You have become pure, so enter it to abide eternally therein. Quran 3973 The dwellers of paradise will say, and they will say praise to Allah, who has removed from us all sorrow. Indeed, our Lord is forgiving and appreciative. Quran 3534 The people of paradise will live in pure delight without pain and suffering. No one will feel any anger, sadness, sorrow, emptiness, resentment, envy, jealousy, or bitterness towards others, regardless of any differences or disagreements they may have experienced in their life. The hearts of the dwellers of paradise will be clean and pure. All speech and actions will be good and we will have removed whatever is within their breasts of resentment, while flowing beneath them are rivers. Quran 7, 43 One would feel absolute safety, tranquility, peace, and contentment in paradise, facing no worries or concerns. Faces will shine radiant like stars in the sky, some akin to the glow of a full moon. The people of Jana will praise God, not because they are forced to, rather, of their own free will. The people of Jana, paradise, will never have to use the restroom, spit, or blow their nose. They will have combs made of gold, and their sweat will bear the scent of musk. They would wear no hair on their bodies and no beards. The people of Jana will have beautiful characteristics. Their physical forms likening the form of Prophet Adam, peace be upon him, sixty feet tall and forever the age of thirty-three. They will have the beauty of Prophet Yusuf, peace be upon him, and the heart of Prophet Ayub, peace be upon him. The people of Jana will have the strength of 100 men of this world. Paradise will be lined with immense mansions made of gold on top of silver. Rooms upon rooms upon rooms inside these palaces will feature waterfalls falling beneath their rooms. No cracks will mar their facades, nor any repairs will ever be needed. The soil of Jannah is of pure white musk, and the pebbles are made of pearls, rubies, 
diamonds and jewels. The spread carpets in paradise are culled from the soft and colorful silk and are filled with musk, camphor, and amber. The people of Jannah will lean back into the fabrics of luxurious elevated soft couches and beds with cup holders and comfortable blankets. The beds will be so wide in proximity, it would take 500 years to walk through their confines. The people of Jannah will have a true kingdom, which they will control, which will offer whatever they desire. The people of Jannah will have thousands of servants at their command. Paradise will flow forth with rivers of clear, pure water, rivers of milk that never go sour, rivers of pure, luscious honey, and rivers of wine that do not intoxicate. Jana will never be too hot or cold and will always host an environment of the perfect temperature. Jana has no day or night hours, no sun nor moon, as there will be no need. Paradise contains trees offering shade that seem like they do not cease. The dwellers of Paradise will eat and drink whatever they wish. If one sees a bird he wishes to eat, it would fall roasted between his hands with no effort on his or her part. Cups will be served to them containing shiny rubies, pearls, and diamonds. Fruits will hang freely from trees and automatically lowered for its inhabitants to enjoy whenever they desire. They will be told, eat and drink in satisfaction for what you put forth in the days past. Quran 69.24 The clothes of Jannah will never wear out or age. The dwellers of paradise will wear luxurious green silk and will accessorize with jewelry made of diamonds, white pearls, gold, and rubies. They will be adorned therein with bracelets of gold and pearl, and their garments therein will be silk. Quran 22-23 A crown of magnificence will be placed on heads that would outshine the sun, and residents will be given to wear 70,000 different clothing adorned with various gems and pearls. One piece of their jewelry would be worth more than this world and everything it contains. The fragrance of the perfume of paradise will smell so pleasant and strong that the scent would reach up to a distance equal to a thousand years. To satisfy the natural urge and desire for physical pleasure, virgin spouses will be gifted to be loved and adored. Indeed, we have produced the women of paradise in a new creation and made them virgins, devoted to their husbands, and of equal age. Quran 56, 35-37 Allah will say to the dwellers of paradise, O people of paradise, is there anything else I can give to you? The dwellers of paradise will respond, O Allah, didn't you beautify our faces, enter us into paradise, and save us from the hellfire? You have given us what you have given no one else from your creation. Allah will then respond, Shall I not give you better than that? And Allah will remove his veil. Nothing will be more beloved and enjoyable than the vision of Allah the Glorious. The ultimate pleasure one will experience in Jannah is the ability to see their Lord. There is no greater joy than seeing Allah's face, and this experience will stand as the Almighty's most precious gift to his servants who entered paradise. Some faces that day will be radiant looking at their Lord. Quran 75, 22 to 23. Allah will announce to them, death will never come to you again. You will live forever. I am pleased with you today and I will never be angry at you ever again. The inhabitants of paradise will be able to directly communicate with their Lord, acting as his friend and neighbor. The dwellers of paradise will differ in seeing Allah. Some will see him once a week, some will see him twice a day, etc., depending on the level of paradise one inhabits. According to our prophet's narration, the people of Jannah will see God with ease, just like we can see the moon here on earth. Ultimately, the life of this world is not meant for one to experience forever. It is a place where one resides temporarily, as a temporary destination one should prepare themselves to the best of their ability for the next world, their final destination and everlasting. It is irrational and illogical for one to become too connected to and engrossed in a temporary world while forgetting and not preparing for their final and eternal destination, the next world. The descriptions of heaven found in the Holy Quran and the Hadith is meant to inspire 
and encourage one to work harder and become a better person and servant of God. The acts of laziness, procrastination, carelessness, and not using one's intellect can prevent one from entering the abode of never-ending joy and pleasure. Say the enjoyment of this world is little, and the hereafter is better for he who fears Allah. Quran 4.77 One should note that the finest and greatest things in this life do not come easy, and neither will the reward of paradise. One needs to strive to his or her best ability to earn the pleasures of paradise. God states in his book, Race toward forgiveness from your Lord, and a garden whose width is like the width of the heavens and earth, prepared for those who believed in Allah and his messengers. That is the bounty of Allah, which he gives to whom he wills, and Allah is the possessor of great bounty. Quran 5721